The Metamorphoses or Golden Ass is touted as the only surviving work of literature from the ancient Greco-Roman world. It relates the ludicrous adventures of one Lucius, who experiments in magic and is accidentally turned into an ass. Numerous amusing stories, many of which seem to be based on actual folk tales, with their ordinary themes of simple-minded husbands, adulterous wives, and clever lovers, as well as the magical transformations that characterize the entire novel, are included within the main narrative. The longest of these inclusions is the tale of Cupid and Psyche. The goddess Aphrodite, in Roman mythology, Venus, jealous of the beauty of a mortal woman named Psyche, asked her son Eros, in Roman mythology, Cupid, to use his golden arrows to cause Psyche to fall in love with the ugliest man on earth. Eros agreed but then fell in love with Psyche on his own, or by accidentally pricking himself with a golden arrow. Driven by curiosity Psyche frightens away her godly lover. Adventures follow one another but love triumphs in the end, as Zeus endows Psyche with immortality and marries her to Eros. The Golden Ass text is a precursor to the imaginative and amusing literary genre of the picaresque novel in which Rabelais, Boccaccio, Voltaire, Defoe and many others have succeeded. The classical ass story surfaced only in Renaissance. The main plots of it had been developed 200 years earlier by the troubadours. The golden ass is a logical conclusion of a medieval cycle. This book will change your entire perception of history forever. What if ancient Rome, Greece and Egypt were invented during the Renaissance? What if the Old Testament was a rendition of events in the Middle Ages? What if Jesus Christ was born in 1053 and crucified in 1086 AD? Sounds unbelievable? Not after you've read History, Fictional Science by Anatoly Fomenko, the leading mathematician of our time. One of the principal indications of the medieval origins of many ancient documents is the very existence of a renaissance when all of the ancient scientific disciplines, philosophy, arts, and culture in general are assumed to have been revived. The major driving force was the dynasty of Medici of Florence starting with Cosimo the Elder, Lorenzo the Magnificent, Popes Leo X and Clement VII. one of the world's most architecturally beautiful cities. With countless museums and galleries crammed with masterpieces. Here is where Florence assumes its crucial role in European and world history. Experts in both trade and banking. The Medici were to finance many of the adventures that opened up trade routes around the world. The city grew staggeringly rich. The families liked to flaunt their wealth, and money was poured into patronage of the arts, as Florence became a home to artists, sculptors, architects and musicians. As scholars rediscovered or created under aliases the ancient literature and culture of Greece and Rome, Europe emerged from the Dark Ages. Meanwhile the likes of Michelangelo, Donatello and Brunelleschi, and a hundred more whose works adorn Florence today were pushing the representational arts to ever greater heights. An explosion of intellectual energy in the city saw radical thinkers such as Machiavelli or Savonarola, and the dissemination of their ideas via the new medium of printing. 
the resplendent classical Latin regains its former splendor in the Renaissance. This revival of Latin and classical Greek begins in the 8th-9th century AD. The famed medieval troubadours begin to use the plots that the historians call masquerade of classical recollections in the alleged 10th and 11th century. The history of Ulysses, Odyssey, appears in the 11th century as a medieval remake of the well-known classical story complete with knights, bells, dames, jousting tournaments. In fact, all the elements that shall later be considered integral to a classical plot the troubadours were proudly claiming the story of the Trojan War to have been an original one, it had neither been told nor written by anyone before. The troubadours' primary concern was the Trojan War, it had been a native story for them. The Franks considered themselves descendants of the Trojans. While the alleged 8th century author Fredegarius Scholasticus refers to King Priam as a representative of the previous generation, Furthermore, the voyage of the Argonauts became confused with the Trojan War, when the Crusader conquerors. Apparently, the medieval prototypes of the ancient Argonauts had set forth in the direction of faraway Asian lands. Scaligerian classical chronology reckons that the so-called apocalyptic nations of Gog and Magog mentioned in the Bible disappeared from the historical arena in the early Middle Ages. However, reading modern commentary to the medieval Alexandria we find out that the names Gadi and Magadi must be a repercussion of the apocalyptic nations of Gog and Magog identified as the memories of the Goths and the Mongols in the Book of Revelation, who were well known in the Middle Ages. The pressure of classical Scaligerian chronology and all of these oddities brings historians to the conclusion that he Middle Ages were the time when all idea of chronological consequentiality had been lost. Monks with crosses and thuribles at the funeral of Alexander the Great, Catalina attending Mass. Orpheus becomes a contemporary of Aeneas. Sardinopol Greek King and Julian the Apostate, a papal chaplain. Christian saints and ancient pagan characters can be seen side by side on medieval Gothic cathedrals. See the sculptures of Aristotle and Pythagoras together with the Christian saints from the western facade of the Chartres Cathedral. In medieval texts the ancient Alexander the Great compliments the French. We see an ancient miniature from the Great French Chronicle dated to the alleged 15th century that depicts the Trojan origins of the Franks. The French can trace their ancestry back to Francion, the son of Hector and grandson of the Trojan King Priam. All these facts, and thousands of others, are rejected by historians since they contradict the consensual chronology of Jesuits Scaliger and Petavius. This book will change your entire perception of history forever. What if ancient Rome, Greece and Egypt were invented during the Renaissance? What if the Old Testament was a rendition of events in the Middle Ages? What if Jesus Christ was born in 1053 and crucified in 1086 AD? Sounds unbelievable? Not after you've read History, Fiction or Science by Anatoly Fomenko, the leading mathematician of our time.